For, for several years now, uh, Cal Warner and I have been involved in litigating cases involving pelvic mesh. Uh, this is a product that was actually originally developed for use for hernia surgeries and for a number of reasons, not very good reasons. Uh, manufacturers started selling the product to be used in women that had pelvic organ prolapse or stressed urinary incontinence. Uh, this type of mesh basically was used to tack up the bladder and unfortunately um, the product does not perform the same in the pelvis as it would in the abdomen for a hernia surgery and so women have suffered catastrophic injuries as a result of implantation of this device. The device actually can, it changes its chemical composition, it becomes very very stiff and it can actually be um, exposed, you have exposure or extrusion through the body, it requires reconstructive surgery if it can be removed at all and women also have a lot of chronic pain issues, uh, sexual dysfunction, as well as just um, a lot of impact on their life. Uh, at the height of the litigation, there were almost 100,000 individual lawsuits that were filed around the country. Most of the cases were coordinated through multiple multi-district litigation proceedings based in West Virginia before Judge Goodwin. As of the summer of 2016, a number of cases have been settled, especially with the manufacturers, um, American Medical Systems and Coloplast or ARIS. Uh, there are also separate cases that are pending in a different federal court in Georgia involving Mentor, and many of those cases have been settled as well. At this time, uh, Judge Goodwin is preparing a number of cases for trial. There is a multi-plaintiff case that may include as many as 30 or more plaintiffs in a single trial uh, that may occur in West Virginia later this year, as well as preparing 600 individual cases against Johnson & Johnson and Ethicon for uh, remand back to local jurisdictions for trial settings. There are also ongoing um, ne settlement negotiations as well as trial preparation in cases involving BARD and Boston Scientific. So even though the litigation has been going on for several years and the number of pending cases has fallen dramatically, we still anticipate that there will probably be several more years of litigation uh, both in West Virginia as well as transfer of cases back to local jurisdictions for individual trial settings.